Well, good morning and welcome to our Lenten devotional. Today is Thursday, April the 9th, 2020, and it is Monday, Thursday, also known as Holy Thursday. And again, it's one of those momentous days on the church calendar that we are going to celebrate and observe in our homes today and certainly wish we could be together, but I believe God's going to bless us just the same as long as we worship him and our hearts are turned toward him. You know, that's the main thing. It doesn't matter necessarily if we are in a church setting or whether we are in our homes. I believe God is present with us no matter what. So we are going to worship him and we're going to have this special day of remembrance of the time that Jesus Christ and his disciples gathered for that momentous event that we consider the Last Supper on Holy Thursday or Maundy Thursday. This is Reverend Phil Anderson from Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church in the capital city of Topeka, Kansas. So glad you're joining us today. And we will begin with a short word of prayer. Please join me as we pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for being with us in the midst of transitional times, in the midst of uncertainties, Lord, that we feel your presence very distinctly. And Lord, we reach out to you today knowing that you're reaching back to us. Lord, I pray that you would give us the capabilities now to just put everything aside, all of the distractions and the concerns of the day, so that we can focus on you as we observe now this special day of Holy Thursday. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this time. The scriptures that are read, may they be meaningful to us. May they be life-changing to us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to read the suggested text today from our lectionary for Thursday, April 9th, 2020, Palm, or, uh, Bondi Thursday. We've been through Palm Sunday. We've been now through the first three days of Holy Week, and now we are at one of the really big days on our Christian calendar, Holy Thursday, also known as Maundy Thursday. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and read our scriptures today. First will be from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat of its raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is a Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. 
the reading of the Passover story found in Exodus. Now our psalm today is from Psalm 116, 1-4, and then verses 12-19. to 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice, and I call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. We now go to our New Testament reading today. It's found in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And then finally, now our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17 and 31 to 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This concludes our scripture readings today for Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday. Now let us pray. Dear Lord, we 
have received the words today that you have given us for this special day, where we remember that Last Supper that you shared with your disciples. And Lord, your commandment that we should love one another. Lord, help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. But Lord, help us to honor you by being obedient. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Maundy Thursday is a special day on the Christian calendar. Of course, it falls toward the end now of Holy Week. The word Maundy comes from the Latin word mandatum, and that means to command or to order. And in this particular case, it refers to this upper room event that's recorded in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John, where Jesus is about to be with his disciples for the last time before his crucifixion in a setting in which they can all relax and be of the same accord. And Jesus, as we have read, shows one last time his mission of being a servant. And he does it as an example for those in his midst so that his disciples would understand what it means to serve other people the way God wants them to do. The old saying has been that we learn more by seeing someone's example by hearing the words that they speak. And here we see Jesus not only telling the disciples to love one another, but actually to show that in action, to be a servant to others, to sacrifice themselves in obedience to God. And that's what Jesus was doing here. And so this Last Supper event took place in the upper room just before the festival of the Passover. Imagine all of Jesus' life was about to come to this culmination where he knew that within about a day he would be hanging on a cross. Now, I don't know about you, but if you know you are facing a difficult moment and it's on the calendar, there's something that you don't want to face. It's something, though, that you know you have to go through. The time leading up to that can be very difficult. We would rather just get it over with. At least that's how I look at things of that nature. And yet sometimes we can't just get it over with. There has to be a process that plays out. And so Jesus here is going through that process in the final days that we have been observing this week called Holy Week. And now Jesus is with his disciples in the upper room having the Last Supper. He now washes the feet of the disciples in an act of humility and service. And then he makes the command toward the end of our reading today that you love one another just as I have loved you. Jesus said you should love one another. And then he says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. It's very important that we take whatever we read or hear in the scriptures and apply them to our lives. If it's just mere head knowledge, it really doesn't affect us that much. But if we can take it and do something with it that's of a positive nature, then, then that's what I believe God wants. And in this particular case, we know that the act here is crucial, to love one another. Now, we can show our love in all different kinds of ways, but a few that come to my mind right now are the way we treat one another with kindness, with gentleness, with acceptance, with patience, with a loving heart that lets a lot of things that could be upsetting to us just go right on passes. You see, we don't love on our own. We are sharing the love of God to another person. In a sense, we are ways that we can 
stay connected to Jesus and also connect to other people. And we can communicate the love of Jesus Christ by the way we act, by the way we show that love that Jesus was talking about here the night of the Last Supper on Monday, Thursday. That if we would view ourselves as a conduit, as a pipeline, so to speak, between Jesus and others, that love that we've experienced needs to just go right on through and flow out to the other person. And the more that we let it flow out, friends, the more we're going to get of it. I don't know if you've had a garden hose out lately. We've had one out this spring already. And we've been trying to get some water pumped out of a window well over here on the east side of our house and put a sump pump in there and there's a hose connected of course to the sump pump and it's down in the window well and it's pumping the water out and it goes pretty well as long as that hose is wide open the water flows through it pretty quickly and it gets out and does its assigned job however if we have a kink in that hose if it's somehow got a bend in it everything just sort of stops and I think sometimes in our lives, we can allow little kinks to come in to prevent the love of God that we've experienced from flowing to others. And typically it becomes because someone has offended us. Someone has said something hurtful to us. Someone's just done something that just rubs us the wrong way. Well, just think if Jesus Christ had allowed that to happen, he probably would never have gone to the cross because I'm sure he was disappointed on many occasions not only by the people that he was trying to reach for God, but also sometimes from his own disciples themselves. But Jesus never let the love of God stop flowing through him to others. And you can see it here in this example today when they had the Last Supper. Jesus again humbles himself by washing the disciples' feet. And we talked about this on a previous Lenten devotional where been said that the person who washes the feet actually has the easy job. It's letting somebody wash your feet. That's the hard part. We can relate to Peter. You're not washing my feet, Lord. I mean, I could probably say that if somebody said, hey, we're going to have a foot washing ceremony at church today. Take your shoes and socks off and we're all going to line up and have our feet washed. Well, that's a pretty personal, private event because I think it sort of disarms us to some degree. And as I told you previously, I have not been in a foot washing ceremony that was in a church, although I have on occasion washed other people's feet. But the hard part is to let somebody wash your feet. Now, we do that in humility too. And it's funny how if we were all filled with humility, I don't think it would be so hard to let people wash our feet, just like it wouldn't be so hard to get down on our knees and wash that person's feet. If we were all equally humble, <laughs> what a different community of faith we would have. And that's my prayer is that we will learn to be Christ-like in every regard, in serving and allowing others to serve us. There's a certain amount of humility that must be practiced. The commandment that Jesus makes at the end is the key, I believe, that unlocks that door to humility. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus says that, I believe, three times right there in two verses. So if you didn't get it the first time, hopefully Jesus is probably saying you get it the second. If you don't get it the second, you'll get it the third. But may that be what marks us, not just during Holy Week and Maundy Thursday and as we get into Easter and then we kind of hit the reset button, but help it to help that, that to be our way of life, that we really truly show love one to another. God may want to work on you a little bit. You know, he's not done with us yet. We're, we're not finished products by any means. And 
just reading a devotional here earlier today, I'm convinced that it's all a process. You know, we're saved. That's that's a once and final act, I believe, that we are saved and we know that we know that we know that Jesus Christ lives in our heart. But at that point then, it becomes that process of God working in us to give us the desires that he would have us to have. In other words, he's going to continue to mold us and shape us to be the people he wants us to be so that we can then reach out and love others through him and drawing all people to Christ. You know, if there can be said one thing about each of us, I think this would be the greatest thing, and that is that we live a life in such a way that we're pointing people to Jesus. It's not about a church, not about the denomination, or about all the different things that we might even believe. We just want to get out of the way and point people to Jesus. And if we do that, we're going to show the love of God. So that's our devotional for today on Monday, Thursday. I pray that it will be a special day for you, that you can take time to remember these things that we've just discussed, how we're remembering what Jesus Christ did for us and how on that last supper, how he was such a servant and how he maintained his focus on going to the cross, going the distance for us. And we thank him for that. Amen. Let us pray now as we conclude our devotional. Lord, we have a lot of different thoughts right now in our minds, I believe, as we think about this time of year as Jesus Christ was about to go to the cross. But before doing so, he had this last supper with his disciples in which he shared the bread and the wine. And he then washed the disciples' feet before commanding them to love one another. And Lord, that's an example that we need to embrace. And Lord, help us to do just that. Help us to... Remember the words and the actions of Jesus as we go from here. Help us to show other people the love that Jesus has shown us. I ask that would be true for each and every one of us. And I pray this now in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, be with us tomorrow, if you will, for our Good Friday devotional. And then we're looking forward for Easter services online on Sunday, April the 12th, 2020. So we're getting very close now to that great day of Easter. But before that, we go to Good Friday and then Holy Saturday. So tune in again to kaumc.church. We'll look forward to having you with us. Tell your friends and neighbors they are welcome to join us. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Praying that everything is well with you. And now may God richly bless you. This is our prayer. Have a great day.